Father God, we thank you for those eternal truths. Lord, we hold on to you. We thank you for a faith in you. That we are indeed more than conquerors. Maybe this week has been a bit unexpected. Not what we thought, not what we expected. Maybe there's been a few twists and turns, God, but you were there. And you held us in your hands. Father God, this morning as we open your word, may you inspire us and encourage us. Thank you that you hear our prayers. Thank you that you wipe our tears. Thank you that you rejoice with us and celebrate with us. May we be people of love and grace and mercy. May we reach beyond these walls and see lives transformed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So God bless you. Welcome. It's good to be here sharing with you once again. Remember we'll look at Moses this morning and the Israelite people and crossing the Red Sea. So if you have a Bible or a smart device or a new version Bible app or something of that, or just look on the screen and it will appear magically for you. Bible verses, hopefully in order. Yeah. So it's Exodus chapter 14, verse 10 to 19, as we start our focus this morning. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out to the Lord and said to Moses, Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Were there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, Leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. And they will charge in after the Israelites. My great glory will be displayed through Pharaoh and his troops. His chariots and charioteers. When my glory is displayed through them, all Egypt will see my glory and know that I am the Lord. Then the angel of God who had been leading the people of Israel moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. God led his people through the Red Sea. One of the most dramatic, amazing and exciting Stories in God's Word of Him delivering His people. They thought they were stuck, but God made a way out through Moses' obedience. God knew all about Moses, but He still chose him. His brokenness, His wins and losses, His self doubt. If you know the story, Moses kept going back to Pharaoh. After ten plagues, Pharaoh finally said, Go, leave, get out of here. I don't want any more suffering. I don't want you here anymore. Go and worship your God. God sees our struggle. And he does for you what you cannot do for yourself. You might feel stuck or at a crossroad. Maybe there's great concerns in your life. But God is not surprised. He comes and make a, makes a way up, makes a way forward as we move ahead in faith with Him. 
Maybe you were heading in the wrong direction, but God still showed up. You didn't even pray. And he cared for your needs. Because you are his child. Pharaoh is on the move towards them. They hear the rumble of the chariots. Imagine their fear. Imagine their concern. They thought they were okay. They cannot go back to Egypt, which is behind them. And they cannot go forward because there is a sea, a massive body of water in front of them. And they are trapped and stuck and concerned. If you're on the right path, if you're following the right call, there will always be resistance. Because Satan doesn't want to see the children of God triumph. But I encourage you this morning to keep <laughs> pressing on and don't lose faith and don't lose hope and don't lose focus. Maybe all you can see is water before you. But God will make a way. <clears throat> In Exodus chapter 14, verse 11 and 12, up on the screen for us. And they said to Moses, Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still there in Egypt? <coughs> we said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. Did they really say that? Just because you've met your first obstacle? Friends, it's now all Moses' fault, amen? Amen. <laughs> <clears throat> how quickly we love to blame those around us when things don't happen quick enough or make us feel a little uncomfortable or push us out of our comfort zone when people get stuck physically emotionally, mentally they say stupid things <laughs> anyone know anyone like that? <laughs> surely not Let's go back to Egypt, friends. Let's be slaves. Come on, over this way. We're going back to be beaten, whipped, starved. Let us go. Oh, hello. Nice to see you. Big standing there long. <laughs> <laughs> Is that communion, Biscuit? <laughs> Thanks, Val. But how ridiculous. Here they are free. But oh no, let's go back. Let's go back to Egypt. What about trusting in God? What about trusting in Moses? What about trusting one another that all will be okay? Maybe you're stuck this morning in a memory or a pattern or a behaviour. Maybe God is doing important work in you while you're still stuck in that place. Why are you still pushing hard against that thing? And friends, it's not going to defeat you as you faithfully stand and move forward. For God stands over my life and God stands over your life. He sees it all. And He will do what you cannot do by yourself. Moses tried to negotiate with God that was his first mistake back in Exodus chapter 4 at the beginning there. Let me show you today. This happened way before any of today's events. In Exodus chapter 4 verse 1. But Moses protested again. Interesting. Again. He was still complaining. What if they don't believe me or listen to me and I want my puppy? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's not there. Well... What if they say the Lord never appeared to you? <laughs> he didn't know any of that because nothing, of, nothing like that had happened yet. He hadn't gone to Pharaoh yet. But sadly Moses knew Moses. And he knew his limitations. 
He knew his own concerns and fears as we all do. Hear me this morning, don't get trapped in the what if. <coughs> what if they don't believe in me or listen to me, God? What if this or that? I'm not confident, I can't speak well. What, what? what if they say, Lord, I never met with you? Moses knew his limitations, his fears, and his doubts. And we know ours too. Don't get trapped in the what if. Where have you woken up in the middle of the night, gasping in panic and, and fear, and gasping for breath, because you've created this scenario that may never happen. But you've created it in your mind. And so you're filled with panic. But it may never happen. Up on the screen today, sometimes God redeems your story by surrounding you with people who need to hear your past so it doesn't become their future. Sometimes God redeems your story by surrounding you with people who need to hear your past so it doesn't become their future. Remember, we stand in a bigger story. A story that just doesn't revolve around me or you. But it revolves around many people as God does His work. For He is doing a better thing and calls us to be part of it. It's more important than the time you wasted or the opinions of the crowd. What do we need to give to God? What do we need to hand to Him this morning? Until we release that, it will hold you back and God won't be able to use that thing and to use your life for His glory. Is this for anyone today? In Exodus chapter 14, verse 16. Come on, Moses, pick up that staff. Raise it above your head. Over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. Pick up that staff. Remember that stick all those years before? The same staff he threw down and it became a snake and he reached down and picked it up and it turned back into his staff. That same staff, again, would do the miraculous. As he raised it up over the sea and they would walk through on dry again. God showed his power and provision before and he'll show his power and provision again. Point that staff at what you're going through. Raise it up and stretch it out and defeat what is before you. God changes things. <coughs> That's what he does. God changes things. God transforms lives. God makes the story better. Amen? Beauty for ashes. Mourning into dancing. He turns crosses into triumphs. And doubters into believers. Any doubters? You were once. But now we are believers. He turns seas into highways. One more thing. Sure, I've got time. Exodus chapter 14, 19 to 20. Then the angel of God who had been leading the people of Israel moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. Remember that. The cloud settled between the Egyptians and the Israelite camp. As darkness fell, the cloud turned to fire. That would be dramatic. 
Lighting up the night, that would be exciting, a bit like fire, but a good fire, not a bad fire. <laughs> but the Egyptians and the Israelites did not approach each other all night. God had their back. He was in front, he moved behind to protect them. For he stands in the gap. When the enemy is coming. Yes, you can write that down. He won't leave you exposed, but he'll light the way. If you're willing to trust in him and not complain, but persevere and walk by faith onto the dry ground, for God has our back when we are stuck. And he led his people through the Red Sea. What makes you unique? What makes you different? What gives you a different worldview, a different calling, a different purpose? Be bold enough to work that out in life, no matter who challenges you, no matter the obstacles you face, no, no matter the negative voices. What makes you, you? It's been said, people may not always remember what you said, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. So today, don't worry about having the right words to say, but let us lead by example. Let us take a step forward and beat that obstacle. Show love, give grace, and bring hope. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen.